Okay. Okay. So today we're gonna cover about the uh chapter sixteen, like a variable important measures. So mm -hmm. I think that you guys already read the read the book, so the chapter. So I'm gonna just try to try to explain a little bit further in the in the chapter. So in the introduction, he says about the, yeah, because in this chapter is about the how we can measurement about the, uh, how much each variable has, uh, has, has a, its own importance for within the model, in, especially for the predictive kind of purposes. So sometimes <clears throat> frequently we have, a, we need to, we need to measure about the important degree of the importance of, among the each variable, each explanatory variable within the model, and then uh, try to figure, try to understand, um, how how important each variable is, to to predict, uh, predict our outcome, in the model, and that actually has a lot of uh, factors because uh, among the variable, it has its own importance, and also depending on the what kind of uh, data. What kind of uh, training and testing data set we're gonna sample from the, our observation that also affected about the about the importance of the variable, and also also there might be the also uh, importance of the variable might be different according to the what kind of model we're gonna use. So to to consider all of the, these three criteria. This chapter explain about the, how we can uh, measurement uh, measure the importance of the each variable. Okay, so as you can first first thing is as you can see here, important. Uh, try to understand the importance of the each experimental variable has uh, these kind of uh, purposes like a uh, modest implication. So that means by by measuring the importance uh, importance of, of the each variable we can actually specify our model just kind of uh, ex uh, using the using the variable that are very important for our prediction and then excluding some unnecessary unnecessary or redundant variable from the our model i think that this one going to be the most kind of a critical one for our predictive model purposes cuz we if we can uh, run the model uh, uh, with the minimum number of the variable for the predict while uh, with the same level of the prediction power that's the uh, what we actually aim for about the kind of a specifying most effective and appropriate model for our prediction purposes and also we can also try to exploration. So that means we can try to understand the which variable is the more important, which is the main purpose of the, this measurement, right? And also based on the this importance knowledge, we can actually access or evaluate it and developing our domain knowledge. So what kind of variable is the most effect to the prediction? That means that exponential variable is the most significant variable uh, related to the prediction of the our outcome, so there might be the some kind of a theoretical background or theoretical rationale to can be explained by the those kind of findings, especially for the academic journal paper, those validations or those findings gonna be very helpful to develop the, our understanding of the what kind of mechanisms or what variable gonna be effective, you um useful to predict or uh, monitoring some of the our outcome their outcome variable of interest okay so these are the kind of things and then in here it actually says about the assess uh, assessment of the variable uh, variable importance can be two uh, can be divided in two groups like a two approaches one is the model specific and the other one is the model agnostic so model specific is the quite simple because the that motor uh, that kind of a measurement to only apply for the some specific model. So that means what is the big disadvantage of the that approaches is that kind of a measurement to only apply for the some specific modeling approaches. So that means it is impossible for us to compare 
those measurements across the different model approaches. Model agnostic is a more like a standardized kind of a approaches, which means it, it does not have any assumptions about the model, uh, model specific kind of assumption. It does not have uh, those kind of assumptions. That actually allows us to the uh uh extract extract the damn measurement across the model, different model, and then we can compare that measurement uh across the across the different model. That's the big advantage of the that model agnostic approaches. Okay. So in this chapter, actually, rather than using the models, uh, explain the model specific approaches such as the p-value or some of the VIT measurement in the regression model. Actually, this one, this chapter focusing on about the model agnostic kind of approaches that can be uh, applied to the any modeling, any different modeling approaches. So it does not assume any modeling uh, assumption, does not have any assumption about the model structure. So that means it works it works any any modeling structure any more any different model okay so so what more specifically what is the intuition behind the, the, these kind of approaches is we just uh, try to try to measure like uh, how much model performance going to be changed if the effect of the selected exploratory variable going to be removed which means we have uh, some of the full model, right? And then, and then we can remove a variable from that model. And then we can estimate the difference in the loss function. So that that's the kind of a simple step. This is a kind of a simple step about the, how we can, uh, we can uh figure out the what how much importance each variable is. So, like uh, when we can remove the some specific variable from our model, and then we can measure about the loss function, what we learned from the previous chapter, and then. By calculating the differences between the those two values, so which means the loss function in the full model, and then loss function from the another model, remove uh without without specific variable included. So by calculating the those differences, gonna give us to the to the how much the importance they are. So that means. In here, uh, in here, the larger the change gonna be performances, the more important the the variable. Which means when we remove the, some specific variable, and then there is a huge differences in loss function between the those two model. That means that variable has the significantly affects to the prediction power of the model. That's the how how. This, how we can measure about the model uh, importance of the each variable. Does that make sense? Okay, it is about kind of a, a little bit backward, a uh, backward way. So rather than the measure directly measuring the importance of the variable by itself, we can just uh, thinking about the what if we can remove the variable and then what the performance should be. And then, and by calculating the those perform those differences, we can directly we can uh we can also figure out the how important it uh the, the variable is for the model. Yeah. So it's a very simple, yeah. It yeah, it's a very simple idea, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's really kind of, useful because you can yeah. keep a uh, interpretation bank on the the measure that you're using, you are first using the root mean square error. You know that uh, your variable importance is in the in the same units as your prediction. You are using ROC. You know that it's a percentage, and um, yeah, it's really useful to have that baseline. Yes, correct. So 
In this case, what is the very important is how we can try to try to set up the full model, this one, right? This one is the very critical. And then when we try to remove the variable and then uh, how we can try to apply to the sum of the data sample from the full model, same data, and then uh, calculate on this one gonna be, and then uh, what kind of a loss function we gonna, we gonna use. I'm gonna explain later, but what kind of a loss functions we gonna use to calculate the modeling performances and then uh, the more uh, calculating the importance of the that variable in the model. These are the kind of a main critical question that we have to answer or define to learn the, this kind of intuition or this kind of a, you know, mechanism, okay? So method is uh, actually mathematically is a kind of a little bit, little bit complicated, but it is uh, quite simple because uh, these, these are the all the steps we have. So computing to the L0, so that means the loss function with the all the all the observation of x, all the observation of y, and then a predictive value of y, okay, from the original data set, and then we can create the another data set for the for the x value, which is the permuting the vector of the observed value of the x. So that means it's a kind of a resampling resampling data set from the from the our original. X observation data, okay? This is the actually randomly resample data, okay? To testing the performance of the model, okay? And then we can do the another prediction based by using the, this randomly sample data of the X, okay? And then we can get the, this mod, uh, this mod, based on the this modified data, we can get another prediction. And then we can calculate the dead loss function again. Then we can import, we can get the importance by calculating the these differences, right? Yeah, it's the same. It's a simple. It's the it's the exactly what I just explained in the previous section, right? Just computing to the current full model loss function. This is for the full model. Okay. And then we can get the randomly sample data of the of the exponential variable. Without without uh without uh some specific variable uh variable removed. Okay, that's the randomly sampled data set of the X. So in this, in the second step, we're gonna delete, we're gonna delete the, some specific variable and then uh, get the modified data of the X. Based on the dead one, we can calculate the prediction again. And then after that, by using the, this modified data and then a new prediction, and also observe original observation of the y, we can calculate in the loss function for the for the another for the that uh that specific model with uh, some specific variable removed, and then calculate the that differences, loss function differences, like uh, difference in loss functions between between the those two model, right? It's a simple, it's a very straightforward way, okay? That's it. That's the kind of a very basic part of the introduction about the, how we can calculating the importance of the variable, okay? Any question? Okay, so let's move to the next section then. So next section is the just kind of a we can okay now we understand about the some of the theoretical and statistical knowledge about the, how this one gonna be uh process. So next one is that we just uh, uh apply to the this kind of approaches to the uh, actual example. So 
in here, in case of the Titanic data, we are already familiar with. We in here we can actually calculate about the uh, ROC curve area under the ROC curve like the AU, AUC. That value actually calculate loss function going to be calculated about the one minus of the AUC because the one is, is the perfect kind of a prediction power. So one minus AUC area going to be the our our performance value like a loss function. Loss function difference. Right, so so when you see the figure sixteen point one, we can actually say about okay here this is a little dotted line here, is the L zero function, which means our loss function for the full model, and then this bar actually representing about the VIP differences, when we mentions above above here, this one. Okay, so in this case, we actually using the area under the ROC curve. This one actually is like like we see here, one minus area on the curve for the modified data, x data, modified observation data of x. So these are the kind of a function, and then this bar actually representing about the how important it is for the each variable. Because uh, when we remove the this gender variable, our our uh, loss function has the this kind of a difference. That means this one is gender is the most most critical and largest uh, most important value to predict about the survival survival ratio among the passengers in the Titanic. And then the next one gonna be the class and age, et cetera, right? And fair, right? That's the how you can interpret the, this kind of plot, okay? And then what is the thing is that this one is just kind of a one-time learn, right? Of, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, for the loss function calculation. But the problem is when we looking at the up to the when you're looking at the this one like a second step here. This one actually says about we're gonna permuting the our new vector of the observed variable like a randomly sample data set of the x. That means we actually try to calculate the loss function based on the this randomly sampled value. So that means maybe if we can to repeat this step again, maybe this kind of a random, randomness sample of the data set, maybe result gonna be the different, right? Cause we using the randomness sample the data set for calculating the our new new loss function and then uh, and then uh, that new loss function gonna be uh, used to calculate the, this loss function. So every time we run the this step, Loss function gonna be slightly different, different depending on the this randomly sample data set. So to make sure this kind of a this kind of a difference is gonna be statistically kind of a converged or significant, we're gonna try to repeat this step, like a more like an iteration, to to get the point about the this kind of a value is kind of a more uh, kind of a converging to the some specific level or threshold, okay? So, so to, pre to address the, this kind of issue, we actually have to do the some of the iteration, okay? Of the step in the previous page, okay? And then we can calculate the mean, mean AUC, uh, AUC ratio, and then I calculate the one minus mean AUC. Okay. And also, as you can see is that this blue bar, we can also showing about the sum of the variation, like a, like a variance, also can be calculated to 
uh, to figure out the, what's the what's the minimum and what's the maximum for like uh, some of the confidential kind of uh, interval kind of calculation to 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 obtain the our reliability of the our our result. Okay. That's the how we can do the keep uh, do the iterations here. In this case, it actually about the 10 communication uh, communication process, which means through the 10th step, we're gonna repeatedly resample, randomly resample the data set 10 times, and then uh, calculating the its mean AUC value, and then uh, calculate the calculate the these loss function differences with the uh, with the variation calculation too. So as you can see here, still gender is the most uh, important variable in class and age and fair. Order does not change too much. Actually, change not uh does did not change at all. But the thing is that also when we're looking at the variations in here, right? Maybe gender gender does not have uh, too much variations compared to the class or age or fair. So that means also these kind of uh, this kind of uh, importance is uh, quite consistent. Even if we can use the different differently randomly sample the data set, it still it has a very less very uh, less variations about the estimation of the, this importance, which is the very good, right? Random forest has a very good appropriate model to calculate the, this kind of a. Uh, importance of the variance, okay? And then also, what is the, uh, as I can say in the, at the beginning, what is the good thing about the model agnostic very uh, important variable important approaches is we can calculate, we can compare these measurements across to the different kind of a model. In here, first one is the generalized boosted linear regression and logistic regression and random forest in here. As you can see here, when we looking at the, this L0 kind of a uh, calculation, right? Which one do you think is the most uh, best, I would say the best full model for the prediction of the, of the uh, survival rate? It would be generalized boosted regression. Yeah, but the reason is it has the minimum loss function when when it when it when generalized uh, when we run the model by using the generalized boosted regression, that means it has the minimum loss function. That means uh, it is the most the strong uh, strongest predictive power compared to the logistic and random forest. So random, actually logistic regression is a quite poor because it is a, the largest L0 function. So that means there is a lot of a kind of a error or some of the residual are gonna be generated when we using the logistic regression, okay? And also now when we looking at the, this kind of a, a differences of the loss function, when you're looking at the gender and class and age is uh, quite critical across to the older model. But the thing is that uh, when it comes to the fair, actually random forest and then a generalized boost to regression actually has the fair is the quite important. But the thing is the logistic regression is uh, saying that the fair is the not that important, right? There is some kind of a, this kind of a comparison actually show us about the, which, which variable actually uh, Im uh, important depending on the, which model we're gonna use, right? Some, some, some variable is the quite consistent across to the, regardless of the model we use. But in case of the fair variable, there is a, some of the, some of the uh, uh, conflicts about the understanding the how importance of the fair variable across the model, right? So, so now we we see the those kind of uh, uh, little example, and then uh, we can actually figure out the what's the 
advantage and then this limitation about the, these approaches. So like you said, like I said, the most important uh, uh, advantage, big advantage of the, these approaches is the plot. Plotting of the variable important measurement is very easy to understand because uh, it's a kind of a very simple bar chart and then we can easy to compare about the which one is the most variable, right, important. And also another thing is that we also compare it to the between the model can be read to the interesting insight, which means we can actually compare, apply to the using the this measurement across the whole different kind of modeling approaches, like here in the in the this figure, right? And then and then what is the limitation? So limitation is uh, like I said, is the this their measurement is actually depending on the randomly nature of the permutation. So then that means it is a kind of a, of depending on the what kind of a randomly generating the explanatory variable we're gonna select it, our performance measurement is gonna be very different. That's the reason why we're gonna keep try to try to repeating the this kind of process to get to the point that uh, there is a not much variation about the estimating the variable importance, okay? So that's the reason why the iteration is the very important in this case. And then iteration can be addressed this issue somewhat effectively. Not perfectly kind of solve this limitation, but the thing is uh, iteration gonna be give us some of the converging or mean value of the our variable importance measures. And then, and then we can try to say we can we can say about the okay so this one this one is a kind of a range of the very uh, loss function differences between the uh, here and here, right? And then uh, that gonna be give us to the more uh, remove the some of the statistical uncertainty of the, our estimation, okay? Any questions so far? Anything? Okay. Yeah, in the book. So, yeah, again too. Yeah. 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 It will, it, this method, I think maybe the most important limitation is that it doesn't contemplate iter uh, interactions. Like you you see the linear model versus a more flexible model. You see that one of the variables is not important. Maybe do it that. You know that a linear model usually just make important all the variables, no, all the involucrated. It's like a important point, but maybe no, it's it's good to do it, you just have few variables. When you have many variables, it's like, it's hard to find those relationships using this method. Mm. Yeah, that is also correct, because uh, it is actually kind of a relative kind of a calculation. So. If we have a too many variable in the model, maybe it might be the computationally also very in intensive. At the same time, it is also very hard to figure out which one is going to be the most important. But the thing is, even if we can have uh, many, extremely a lot of a variable in the model to the to maintain the predictive power, maybe there might be the some of the redundant variable among the var uh, among the explanatory variable, in that cases, we can also think about the, some of the dimension reduction kind of technique, or maybe just kind of a list-wide deletion of the redundant variable to, uh, at, uh, while maintaining the prediction power at the same time. So there is a lot of a strategy we can do. Maybe we can keep the old variable as many as possible to, to maintain the maximum uh, maximum prediction power, but at the same time, model efficiency kind of a process, we also thinking about the, some of the efficiency of the modeling approaches. Because uh, when we looking at the post snippet, uh, snippet in R in the next chapter, when we learn the, these kind of R command, you can see that the, depending on the sum of the model, it takes a lot of time to calculating these kind of uh, important variable, maybe 
when we even if uh, when we try to do the 50 permutation process it is a computationally very intensive but at the same time if we have uh, too many variables to be uh, inc uh, included in the model it takes much longer time to calculate the, this kind of a variable, this kind of a variable in, uh, importance. In that case, we definitely thinking about the, how we can remove the redundant variable for the modeling efficiency. Just kind of a practical kind of things. Because like I'm here, because I'm going to explain a little bit later, but in here, in case of the calculating the variable, variable importance measurement for the random forests, and single vector machine, these two actually take a lot of time to learn the, these two code, only for the this 15 permutations, okay? Because the modeling, because the, this data model and then the variable is the very simple, right? One, two, three, four, five. We will be only using the five exploratory variable, right? And then we have a 50, iteration is it still have a computationally quite intensive it gives us a very good insight but we have to keep in mind that uh, this one is uh, also computationally very intensive if we have a very big data set and also if we have a very a lot of a variable included in the model yeah calculation gonna be very very complicated and you know, computationally intensive in that case, maybe we can thinking about the, what kind of a variable going to be we think is the redundant and not significant. Significant In that case, we can think about the reducing the sum of the variable for the modeling efficiency. So there is always kind of a trade-off going to be happen between the maximizing our prediction power versus making our model simple and efficiently learning for our prediction. There is always trade-off. And then uh, which one gonna be more important is the depending on the what kind of research question you have or what kind of research context you have and then uh, what research projects mainly aim at. And then uh, how sponsors gonna say about the, your model and also your capacity and your time availability of the London model. Yeah, there is a whole a lot of factors to uh, uh, that influence about the uh, uh, those kind of a trade offs. So, so in the academia situation, we can learn anytime, anything we want. But in practice, in the in the research projects, we have to also thinking about the how efficiency we how efficiently we have to learn the model. Why, why are we maintaining the sim, uh, almost the same level of the prediction power? Okay. That's a kind of a most tricky part of the, these kind of approaches. Okay, so next chapter is the kind of a example of the code snippet about the R. So this one is actually using about the housing prices estimation. So it is also the same approaches in the previous example. Previous example is about the calculating the probability of the survival rate. And in here, this one is actually estimating about the model uh, housing prices based on the five different uh, exploratory variable. And then in here, we aim to the estimating the variable importance of the, these five exploratory variable on the housing prices as an outcome. So in this case, we're gonna use the root, uh, loss root mean square, cause uh, this one is also another population function, like a root mean square error function. And then we can calculating the observed and then a predictive, and then using the new randomly sample the test data set, we're gonna try to calculate the loss function in here, right? And then, we can try to calculating about the model parts by using the Dalex kind of packages. And then uh, we're gonna using the this explainer and then a loss function. And then a B is actually number of form, uh, number of form, number of iteration. 
like a permutation. Okay, because uh, up, up to the top in here, these are the, all the arguments we can do. So loss function is kind of a, what kind of a loss function we used. And then the type is a kind of a low, is the kind of a, we can use in the just low uh, uh, loss function, or we can calculate the differences or ratio. There is a several way we can calculate about the variable importance measurement. Low is a just kind of a using as the, that low uh, loss function after the uh, permutation, or difference is the just kind of a calculating the L0 minus L. Ratio is the kind of L divided by L0. Okay? That's the how we can calculate the types. And then a variable is also order of the explanatory variable and also variable groups. And then a B is the number of permutation. And then the N is the number of observation we're gonna sample from the data. We can also, also try to narrow down the, our data set for the computational power, okay? And then we can calculate the, all of the, these things, like a B equal one means we only do the, do the loss, calculating the loss function in the single, uh, single step. And then we can keep calculating this, and then when we flatting uh flatting the that uh that uh that value of importance, we can get the, this kind of uh result, depending on the root mean square error. So this zero is actually L zero kind of function, and then and then this little bar actually uh about the L L diff. Uh, not LD, like a VIP diff, right? Like a, like a variable important differences. So as you can see here, this trick is the where the housing located at is the most important variable to the estimate the prices. And also surface area and floor, uh, floor area, and then the construction area, and then the number of room in order, et cetera, right? And then we can also also compare to the this kind of a variable importance measurement across to the different models. So first one is the just kind of a regression. Second one is the random forest, and then the third one is a single vector machine. And then we can learn each one based on the same iteration and then the same same condition. And then we can also calculating about the these kind of differences across the different model. Okay. What is the interesting to find is the const in, when we looking at the this construction here in this database, because of this trick and surface and floor is the quite consistent, right? Across to the all the model that we tested, right? It's the same order. And then a district is the most critical uh, exploratory variable that affects to the prediction of the price, right? But when we thinking about the construction here, like here and this one and, and this one, right? Actually, random forest and then the support vector machine says that the construction here is also affected to the estimating the housing prices. But linear regression says the construction here is not that important. Okay, this one is a very interesting find for me as a planner because you know why these things might be happen. Do you have any idea or any guess about the why this one is important? Because uh, in case of the construction here, okay. In this case, there might be the, a lot of a historical, what is called a historical neighborhood. Especially in the US, those kind of a historical neighborhood is, uh, is uh, a lot of uh, uh, subsidies supported by the government to maintain the, their traditional uh, building heritages. 
to preserve the, those kind of a historic preservation for the, those old buildings. So that means that the, even if building is the very old, it does not necessarily mean that the debt prices is low, okay? But the random forests and then a support vector machine does not consider those kind of vector, okay? That's the reason why, because uh, they actually, random forest and then a support vector machine is uh, just kind of a uh, measuring about the construction year is uh, just kind of a number of uh, years about the, uh, representing about the, the old, how old they are and then uh, those old, those age of the building gonna be affected to the some of the decay kind of effect of the uh, of the housing or something. But sometimes when linear regression result gonna be tell us is the construction year is not that important. Sometimes depending on the when we looking at the building in the historical neighborhood and then they are the actually historically preserved kind of building those prices is extremely high, you know, because those are the very traditional kind of building supported by the subsidy from the local or federal government. That actually has a lot of a premium to that old building. And then those, those historical housing in the historical neighborhood tends to be, tends to have a very high Prices compared to the other, other normal older buildings with the same, same surface area, same floor area. So, so that's the kind of a, kind of a my thought about the urban planner or architecture. So, so that means in this case, I personally think that when we try to interpret the, this kind of construction year kind of factor it, about the, how important they are, it should be very cautious about the, how this one going to be very and then how this one going to be really have a predictive power to the prices estimation. It depending on the neighborhood, which is the district, right? So that means that there might be the whole kind of interaction between the construction year and then a district, which needs to be tested a little bit further to testing about the which one gonna be the more important. So these are the just kind of a simple example. And then these are the end of the, this chapter. So any questions, anything? No, I'll just say, uh, you know, this, yeah. this, uh, particular algorithm, the permutation importance, uh, I think is a pretty uh, popular uh, one out in the yeah. community, in the machine learning community, uh, probably because it is model agnostic. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will say uh, just a, another related algorithm. I don't, I'm just curious if you guys have used this. Uh, it's called Baruta. Uh, B-O-R-U-T-A oh, okay. is one that I've used quite a bit myself. It, the classic imp implementation of that um, uses a random forest, so it's not quite model agnostic. Although I think there've been adaptations of it, um, you know. So, so it, it's kind of similar to to what we described in this chapter, where you're permu permutating right all, all of the uh, features uh, in kind of a random fashion, um, and then you know there's a statistical test that's being done. I think it's a t test. Um, to say like is variable importance uh, mm -hmm. of the, the the true uh, feature uh, is it is it is it um, statistically significantly sorry is it statistically different um, from the the shadow feature or the randomly permu permuted uh, feature mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a cool tool um, if you're trying to truncate the the number of features that you're using. In your project, okay. um, I know with permutation importance here, that's not the uh, necessarily the objective is to get rid of variables. Although you you can do it that way, I guess Baruta is kind of nice because it, it really does tell you get rid of these variables, right? Because they're they're not statistically different than um, you know randomly permuted uh, version of the feature. So and, and I think there's there's quite 
quite a few other uh, algorithms out there in the that that folks are using um but but this one is it's, it's pretty pretty nice and and powerful yeah because uh, this one is uh, i personally think the most kind of a straightforward and uh, highly visualized kind of a technique so anyone we don't have any background about the uh machine learning or any statistical model they can they can still figure out the which one gonna be more very more important just looking at the plot right bar plot so that's actually one of the big advantage of the, this one and then you said the boruta right like b-e-r-u-t-a b-o-r-u-t-a uh b-o-r-u-t-a that's okay. right boruta okay B -O yeah I, i've used that a, a number of times and it's it's been helpful for if, if you want a parsimonious model but you're using like a uh, some sort of okay. tree-based model. Okay. Okay. Maybe I will try to check that out too. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. So any any question or anything? No, thank you for presenting. That. Great job. Okay. Thanks, Kanto. Yeah. So this is it. And then uh, next uh next week who gonna be next week that will be me oh uh, uh, okay yeah okay. i think we're talking then... partial dependence plots next yeah. week right right all right so okay so thank you everyone and then uh, have a nice weekend and then uh we will see you on uh, next week then sounds okay. good thank you see you next week okay